What is up, you amazing people? It is I, Nima, and today I want to talk about a game that can literally make you time travel. But before we do that, we have to get into all the YouTube stuff. Please, please hit that like and subscribe button, share the video, ring the bell, do all that good stuff. We're almost 500 subscribers, which is amazing. I love you guys. I love interacting with you. Please comment down below. Anyway, so the game I'm talking about is Table of Tales. This game is a RPG board game. It's a game inside of a game, if you will. You see... This game tells the tale of four scoundrels. Now, these guys did not make the best life decisions and have been pretty um, lawless throughout their life. Well, you join them on one of their last heists. As they're coming back, they're sailing with their treasure as well as a captain who might have some issues. <laughs> There's a mutiny aboard their ship and all hell is breaking loose. As you help the captain quell the mutiny, the ship is damaged, you lose a party member, and the captain for some reason just jumps overboard. <laughs> At that time though, you notice another vessel coming up to you, and uh, it seems to be the governor's ship. Now, this is problematic <laughs> considering you're scoundrels and you have a whole bunch of loot on you. But something seems off about this. Uh, in fact, you notice that instead of the regular crewmates on the ship, it's a bunch of orcs. Now, doing the right thing is not something scoundrels usually do, but in this situation, they needed another ship, so they decided what the heck. They help the ship out by clearing the orcs and actually saving the governor who was on board. The scoundrels were treated to something they've never experienced before when they get back to town. It's a hero's welcome, a celebration of who they are, and they decide with this last bit of treasure in hand to take some time off, to go their separate ways, maybe rethink life a little bit. That is until seven years later, when the governor calls them all together. He wants to meet them to have a serious conversation about something. You don't know what it is. You meet them on a dark night, and that is when he gets assassinated. Now this town watch and everybody suspects it's you. And this is where the game truly begins. This is now where you unravel the tales of, about the scoundrels. Who is setting you up for murder, and what's the story behind it all and that is how this game plays out now i absolutely love this game and i love the story and what i meant about time travel no joke is true so i had to play this game during my lunch break and that's you know from about noon to one so and i'm lucky i have my own office and you know i ended up playing this game from noon to four and i kept playing it i was just sucked into this game which give you a, a good indication of how well the writing is how deep the story is because this is a game about a game I mean, the characters are literally game pieces. They can be knocked over, which is kind of amusing. And I think one of the most interesting things is the way that you're staring at the same area for the entire time, but the game itself transforms. You're looking at a box which has water in it, and it's almost like Legos being built up the way that it transforms into different scenery. And I enjoy the hell out of that. It just looks really cool. And the sound and narration really drags you into this game in other ways that uh, maybe more not approachable in other games. I, I usually don't like a narrator, but for this it works so well. And you are treated with other uh, voiceovers as well, but the main one is the narration. And it, like I said, just really ties the game together. Graphically, the game looks beautiful. It plays like it should. It runs like it should. The performance of it runs great considering this was a PlayStation VR port. And I think they just did an amazing job with it. There's m many areas where I think, yes, if this was in VR, this would look really cool. But to play it on the Nintendo Switch did not take anything from it. The gameplay itself utilizes a hybrid turn-based stamina mechanic in which every move that you make requires stamina. Every attack that you make requires stamina. And so you are limited by the amount of stamina you have and the moves that you decide to make. Each character is also given a role, if you will. A Horatio is your thief. He's the one with agility, he's the charmer of the group, and Thomas is your healer, your range attacker, Hammer. She is like your tank and your most powerful ally. And Una is your dark mage. So everyone has a job, everyone has an ability, and they all have secondary abilities as well that come in the form of like intelligence or charisma or something of that nature and usually these come to play at least a few times during the game where you're going to want to put your best foot forward and um i can't say enough about the game because i really did like the story i like the character development uh, this is a situation where i actually felt for the characters i was really drawn into what this game was selling me and i really really liked it i think there's gonna be a lot of people who enjoy this game on the switch and maybe now that 
that it's on a bigger, more wide platform, as well as it's also on Meta uh, 2 as well. Um, but it's it's going to be seen by so many more people and more hardcore gamers. Uh, I'm not saying VR is trendy or anything, but it does seem to be a place where a lot of more casual people will play. And I think this game is going to, to do really well on this platform. But I haven't talked about any of the negatives. And honestly, it's because there's not a lot of them. One of them isn't really even a negative. It's just um, a moment where the game kind of takes you out of focus. And when I mean focus, I mean, the visuals pan back, and it seems like your indicator is gone. But really, all you have to do is hit the third stick, the R3 button, and it'll take you back to the character. Like, it, it's not a fault of the game. Nothing's wrong. It just feels like it is. It's just a weird little issue. The other thing that I would say is I wish you could change difficulty in the middle of your campaign. Only because the final battle is one of the hardest, most difficult things I've had to do in a long time. And uh, it, it was it, it was kind of irritating, <laughs> to say the least. I had I mean, we're talking multiple, multiple hours of me trying to beat this final boss, and finally I did, but wow, is it difficult. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm curious what your thoughts are on it, if you're going to pick it up. I hope you guys do. Like I said, this game is really fun. I was very impressed with it. Um, but let me know all your comments down below. I appreciate you. And I also want to thank Tin Man and Neil over there at Tin Man Games for hooking me up with the code. It's awesome. I appreciate you so much. Anyway, take care, guys. Bye-bye.